but Cataldo driving on there are three chasers in fact all the chasers trying to come across to these uh, two riders in the lead yeah, still not over. If they'd, uh, they'd raced the, you know, the whole time round, the, you know, the first finishing circuit with the Arvison trying to come across on his own now. So uh, he might have the the three pro, pro tour teams, uh, you know, with riders in the front. But it looks as if, uh, you know, the other teams are, are very close to the back. So again, it could be all changed, and uh, when we come into the last lap. But I still think that, uh, you know, these riders, uh, probably not all of them, but these riders will probably uh, stay away because. But they were very slow in the first lap. Uh, it looks as if Arvison is actually coming across to the uh, to Sinkovitz and uh, Cataldo now. Arvison puts it full gas and goes across to the two leaders. So the three Pro Tour teams are outwitting the smaller Pro Continental squads. Arvison catches Cataldo and Sinkovic as they head towards the bell uh, for these uh, riders. It is a fantastic finale to this uh, race. 55 seconds is the advantage Sinkovic, Cataldo, Arvison as they power it on towards the line again that lap went very very quickly yeah it did and this uh, lap is going to go probably even quicker now but uh, this is a you know slightly uphill long drag up through the, the finishing area and uh, again I still think that um, you know this group uh, uh, might be caught but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, you know these uh, possible three riders could stay away now well, look at this, the peloton being led by Milram. We have the three riders in the lead with seven chasers. The seven chasers are the smaller teams. They have ridden a fantastic race today. Uh, Birkenboss, uh, Viss, Denefel, Stalder, Ruriger and uh, Tlingi and Heisman. They have put in a fantastic effort, but they have been outwitted at the moment by the three leaders of Cataldo, Arvison and Sinkovitz. It was Sinkovitz who started to do the damage. There are the seven chasers. They are going to be extremely tired now. Six chasers. Six chasers. We've lost one. We've roughed. We, um... We've certainly lost uh, one rider out of that group. Birkin Bosch, I think it yep. was. The, the rider in the green and white of the Reggio squad has now gone, and Milram chasing hard. They want to try and bring home Eric Zabel for a possible fourth win in this race. But so where's the time check? We don't see it at the moment. Milram piling the pressure on, and it is going to be just under a minute by the looks of things, or in fact just on a minute. It was one minute ten. This gap isn't coming down one minute on the line this time with four and a half kilometers to go yeah it was that first uh, easy lap that the breakaway done but now they've started racing it uh, you know predicting it out uh, from 30 kilometers out I think they just uh, left it too late well Arvison is a great time trialist he has a little look around here at the moment uh, Arvison had a difficult start to the season he had a, a pretty innocuous crash uh, when he was at the CSC training camp in California, but these guys are coming back, Brian. Six riders coming across. Yeah, with, with these, um, you know, obviously Sinkovitz is, is thinking, you know, if I get the sprint to do it up uh, in this climb, you know, three kilometres to go, if these uh, three pro tour riders start messing about, then the other six riders will be right on them. And uh, Sinkovitz is, it looks as if he's uh, losing a bit of confidence now because he's talking into his, uh, his race radio now and. He's thinking, you know, what do I do? What do I do? Do I, do I keep on riding? And, you know, what happens if I get beat? So uh, do I start sitting on and, and hopefully, you know, the bunch gets brought back together and Chiellick could win. So um, he's in all sorts of trouble at the moment, which means to me that uh, he doesn't have the confidence to, to bring this uh, home at the finish. So uh, it could be a, another, you know, second year in a row that, um, you know, uh, liquid gas wins because we really yep. don't need you know, that guy. has certainly got a, a great deal of talent and uh, he's certainly willing to, to put his uh, work in. We know what Arvison's capable of, he's very, very strong, but mm -hmm. uh, Sinkovic is now starting to, to look behind and really it's, it's going to be hard to, to decide what, you know, of the three riders who's going to win. And uh, Schumacher is on the attack and he's oh, going oh, off the front oh, of the oh, bunch. Oh. Look at this, Schumacher puts the gas down and decides to go. He wants to try and go across and win on his own, but he's got a minute to close. Lagutin just behind for navigators. Yep, Lagutin is there. So that's a fantastic uh, attack there. But these three leaders, Cataldo is the slighter rider, isn't he? He's the 
more he's got the, the, the he's got the the Palmaris and the baby Giro sink of it you wonder whether he's got the head to win this race uh, because he he hasn't had the big win has he he's had four wins and they're normally smaller wins but he's always getting the placings I think the fact that he went on his race there radio and tried to speak to to what to do I think uh, I think the, the rider for me has got the experience and probably the, the power on his legs to be uh, Arvison. Well, Arvison, he's a great time trialist. He's the Norwegian time trial champion of 2006. The T-Mobile now started the ride on the front of the bunch. So, okay. again, the shout-out as they went back, and I don't think uh, Sinkovitz has got confidence he's got the legs. Well, Schumacher is doing the damage at the front of the peloton, and it's Linus Gerdeman of T-Mobile who's bringing him back as quickly as he possibly can as we head towards the finish of the 46th Rund Umden Henniger term. It's a, uh, a fantastic finish. We've had a lot of real top winners in this race, and Zabel is one of them who's won three times. Yeah, he certainly has, and uh, it's certainly... Um uh, Sinkovitz has uh, just uh, missed his turn at the back and, and he's starting to mess around and we're coming up to the, the last kilometre. Arvison he knows he has to keep on riding, uh, but you know it's going to be a uh, touch and go whether it's going to be a German winner this year. Well, Cataldo is the real young talent in this group. He's up against the two older riders, Sinkovitz. 26 years of age, Arvison 32 years of age. Arvison has had more wins than these two other riders put together. Eight wins in his professional career. Cataldo, though, with the baby Giro, there's a fantastic race to win. And Sinkovic has had four wins, but they're always the small ones. A professional since 2001, they're under the red kites, but they could well be brought back if Talingi has his way. Uh, Talingi, you've got to fancy him as a sprinter if he gets to the finish. Yeah, Sinkovitz is, um, you know, wants to try and uh, stay away, but uh, you know he's he's gone on the attack on the right hand side Oof. now on on his own uh, and trying to get a bit of a march. We're going into this last corner up to towards the finish, and you know Arvison has just decided, well, you know, um, uh, Cataldo's the inexperienced rider, and he's going to try and uh, put him you know, to the front and make some effort. Well, has Sinkovic timed this little attack to perfection? He banks the bike over to the left-hand side. It's an uphill finish. Cataldo is the rider who has to close the gap. Arvison's been in this position before. He was second in Paris Tours last year, and then suddenly now Arvison decides he's going to have to close the gap on his own. But Sinkovic is piling it on for the T-Mobile squad. They've won all the midweek races in the last few weeks, apart from Flesh Vallon, but they're always there or thereabouts. Sinkovic goes through the left-hander, sets himself up for the finish 400 meters to go for Patrick Sinkovic. Well Sinkovic now is out the saddle and piling the pressure on here he goes he's gonna do it by the looks of things this is gonna be a fantastic win we've doubted him all the way to the finish is Cataldo gonna bring it back in fact are Cataldo and Arvison gonna be caught by the chasers but the German squad of T-Mobile yet again in the middle of the week are gonna bring home the big win and it's an important win for the German squad Patrick Sinkovic is gonna win for the T-Mobile squid squad he goes across the Line 4, 40, 4 hours 46 54 40 kilometers an hour Arvison is in second in third is Cataldo and they are sprinting for the line and it's going to be uh, the rider from 3C who's going to take fourth place Heisman takes the fourth place a fantastic performance but Sinkovic for T-Mobile takes the win and it's uh, Hausler who leads the peloton in at 27 seconds here we are with the result, 4 hours, 46 minutes, 54 seconds. Sinkovic wins, 4 seconds ahead of Arvison. Cataldo in third. Heisman in fourth for Germany at 13 seconds. Viss in fifth. Roriger stayed up there to get sixth place. Talingi was seventh. Stolder in eighth. And Denafil is the rider who makes up the top ten. Oh, he looks a very happy man indeed. And he's an extremely popular winner as he makes his way up now onto the podium. The fifth win of his professional career. Patrick Sinkovic of the T-Mobile squad wins the 46th edition of the Rund um den Henniger Turm. He played the tactics to absolute perfection today. And he is an extremely popular winner in the centre of Frankfurt today. Patrick Sinkovic wins the race and you can uh, hear the crowd. If there was a roof, they'd be raising it right now. There's the podium, Sinkovic, Arvison and Cataldo, the top three riders.